Hi, this is John. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a stylish slideshow uh, with the benefits of keyframing. So I've already imported the first of the prepared images and we can find it in Project Assets and simply select it and drag it onto the timeline. And this is an image I've already prepared with a white border and um, I'll show you later how easy it is to do that. But I just want to scale this within the frame to make it uh, slightly smaller. So let's go to Applied Effects by clicking the um, FX button and under Motion we can use um, the Scale slider just to um, to reduce it within the frame. Something like that will, will do. Let me close the Project Assets so you can see what I've, what I've done there. And um, now I want to um, introduce some, some motion um, using keyframing. Now there's nothing complicated about keyframing. It's just movement across time. And the way we do it is to click on this little stopwatch um, which says show hide keyframe, con keyframe control. So clicking that once opens the keyframing timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this little um, stopwatch next to the word position and that adds the first keyframe. You can see here on the keyframing timeline that this little diamond icon which indicates the keyframe has been added. So I'm just going to intuitively drag within the, um, within the editing window and I'm going to move this right out of the frame. Um, somewhere up to the top left. I, I want this to swing in and then sit in the frame at an angle. So that's the first keyframing uh, position done. And the, 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 when we start to play the video, you'll see it moves in from that top left-hand corner and moves across the frame. So I'm going to click the play button now and just move it on and stop it about one second before the end because I want the photo to remain um, within the frame at the end position. So let's um, let, let's add another keyframe now because this is the, the next position that we want. And we just simply click on this this diamond sign uh, sign here and, and that adds a second keyframe you can see on the keyframe timeline there. So just again intuitively dragging within the frame um, and well, I want it to kind of move and tilt slightly. Um, need to perhaps just resize it again slightly. So this is going to be the final position of the slide within the frame. You can see these blue dotted lines. These are um, the, um, the, the, the keyframing controls and you've got some Bezier handles that you can click on. But I just prefer and find it more intuitive just to drag within the, within the frame itself. Um, again, I'm going to just tilt the, um, the corner handles, something like that. Okay, that will do. So that's the final position. So I'm going to run the play button now so it goes on to the end and it'll, it just stays static then in that position for a few seconds and I'll click the diamond button again here to introduce the, the final keyframe. So let's just play that and see what we've, what we've done. So clicking the play button you can see it gradually comes in and moves in the frame into the final position. And we're going to put a photograph behind it um, uh, using a duplicate of this particular image to make a blurry background which to, will give a professional look to our our slideshow. And what we can do is we can save this now as a preset and we can then apply it to multiple images quite quickly. So to save a preset we simply right click on the word motion and choose save preset and just type in a name that you want for your um, for your preset. Um, I've already saved one so I'm going to just cancel this out and you can see how I use the um, preset when I come to import the remaining photos for the for the slideshow. So I click cancel and then we can um, 
close this down now that we've saved the preset and we can start over with our actual slideshow. So I'm going to clear the timeline by selecting this clip, it's already selected and pressing the delete key on the um, keyboard and um, move the playhead back to the beginning. So we're ready to start our um, slideshow. But before doing that, I'm going to jump into the Elements Organizer and uh, show you how I prepped the images beforehand. So jumping over to the Elements Organizer, I have this um, section in the albums called Slideshow. And I have this album with the nine photos I've already prepared um, with the white border and uh, these are numbered one to nine in album order. You can see the positions in the top left hand corner of the thumbnails and I'll be able to use this to send straight into Premiere Elements or Premiere Elements, whichever you prefer. Um, so I also have the background images in a separate folder but I'm not going to add those to the organizer. I want to just keep the duplicates in a folder in the in the pictures folder on my computer. So if I jump to the pictures folder you can see I have this folder called Venice white borders and Venice backgrounds and um, they're basically just duplicates of the 1920 108 images which have been resized for this particular video. So jumping to the Elements Editor, um, I have the um, first slide here and you can see I've used the crop tool to make a custom crop 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels and a resolution of 72 pixels per inch which is um, suitable for my video. I'm not intending to print so I don't need a higher um, PPI. Um, and um, it pays to take a little bit of time to prepare your images. Um, you can batch convert images, but you often lose parts that you don't really want to. So using the crop tool um, allows you to get the perfect composition um, that you want for each individual image. And um, as I'm only using nine photos, it's worthwhile taking that little bit of time. Um, to create the duplicates with the white border, I simply go over to the quick tab in the um, in the editor. Clicking on that will take the image quick. And um, you can see that we have um, these um, frames in the uh, in the quick tab. And this one here at the uh, um, halfway, this one here called basic white, you can apply with just one click. And there you have it. So that's all I've done. And then I've resaved that as a duplicate. So I have one image for the background and one image for um, the foreground, which um, will be placed on video two in Premiere Elements. So let's um, close this down and then jump back into the video editor. And we can start to assemble the, um, the slideshow and add the animation from the keyframing. So back in Premiere Elements and um, we can start to import the media. So I'm going to go to Add Media and go to my Pictures folder and choose the ones for the background. Simply control click or hold down the shift click and, and click on the first and the last photo and then choose Open. And they're all there in the, in the media bin. Um, I want to make sure these are in the in, in the correct order, so I'm going to choose um, sort by file name because I've actually named them all one to nine, and you can see um, starting from the top, um, image number number one, um, one one B two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In actual fact, I'm going to delete one B because that's the one with the border, and I don't want that on video one. So I'm going to just delete that by pressing the delete key. And I say, just make sure they're all still in the same order, one to nine, and they are. And we can select all, Control A, and drag to video one. And there's all our images, one to nine, in the correct order, and they will be used for the, the background. So what I'm going to do is click on the FX tab. I'll just close this 
project assets so you can see what's happening. Clicking on the FX tab, and I'm going to add some Gaussian blur. Um, the, make sure these are all selected. If they're not selected, simply uh, drag a rectangle over each one to, and that, that will select them all. The best way to add an effect to a batch of selected images or clips is to go to the FX tab and then go to the saved presets. So I have this preset here for Gaussian Blur with a strength of 50, which is actually the maximum. And I'm going to just drag it from here on the save presets onto the, one of the clips. And that actually applies it to all of them. So as you can see, that image has been sufficiently blurred and that will form the background layer um, upon which I will place the actual slides. So now it's time to bring in the, um, the still images with the white frame. And um, rather than bringing them in from the folder, I'm going to bring them in from the organizer album which I've created. And um, the difference between the two is that bringing them in from the organizer automatically adds them to the timeline and adds the default transition. So just going to the transitions tab and the default transition should be highlighted in yellow yellow surround. And there it is, it's a slash and um, slide and that's the one I like to use for these. Um, you can see it in the in the thumbnail, it goes across the um, image and then moves to the next slide. Um, if you right click on the um, if you, once the animation has stopped, if you right click on the um, thumbnail you can choose set as default transition. So I'm going to do that and um, that's now set as the as the default transition. For clicking away from it, you can see the yellow outline. So let's go to the organizer. So we're in the organizer, and I have this um, album called Venice with Border, and those are the prepared images. So I'm going to click the first one and shift click on the last one. That selects them all, and then I'm going to use the um, editor button at the bottom, clicking the drop down um, menu and choosing video editor will automatically add them to the timeline and it, the um, transition, the default transition, will get applied between them automatically. They're already selected so I can now drag them onto video 2 which is where I want them. So let's move the playhead back to the beginning and you can see we have the um, the, the, the image is in place. I, I just now need to apply the um, apply the keyframing. So again I'm going to go to the FX um, tab and my presets and I have this um, um, preset called, called motion swing left and you can see the animation within the thumbnail itself. So I'm going to just drag that to the highlighted clips and that applies the effect to all of them. So if we um, start the uh, play now, you can see the um, the effect, which is what I wanted. And there's the transition. So let's pause that. Move the playhead back to the beginning, and let's add some um, music to the um, to the clip. What I like to use is the one that's already downloaded, which is this one called "Is It Love." You can see it has no green, no, no sorry, no blue corner which means it's already stored on my computer. So simply drag this to the music timeline. And there it is. And um, I'm going to click the box here to fit to the entire video and click Done. And there we have it. Um, Elements has automatically matched it to the length of the slideshow. And uh, so we can play it. Let's, um, let's have a look and see how it uh, turns out full screen.
So there we have it. That's my example of a stylish slideshow. Hope that gives you some inspiration of some of the things you can do using keyframing. And um, don't be put off by the word keyframing. It's not that difficult as I've just demonstrated. Give it a go and see how you get on. In the meantime, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.